China's position as a global economic superpower has for many years now been widely accepted. As Chinese economic power and influence has grown, so too has the nation's geopolitical ambitions. In its backyard, China finds a geopolitical petri dish of Central Asia, a collection of post-Soviet states still defining their global and regional geopolitical objectives. For some within the region, remaining closely tied with Moscow has been a foremost priority, whilst for others, a relationship with the United States has been paramount. Central Asia is a geopolitical crossroads like few other places on Earth, being drawn and indeed directing themselves in multiple directions. It is simply the Silk Crossroad. You guys know what I'm talking about? Western media seldom features anything regarding Central Asia. Indeed, for many in the West, Sasha Baron Cohen's Borat character and his films are the sum total of people's exposure to Central Asia. Good Hello, to my you. name is Borat. Hello. Hello. Thank you. Home to a population of 73 million people across five republics, the region has long been a vital crossroads along the transcontinental Silk Road, linking the peoples of North, East, South and West Asia, and by extension beyond to the distant reaches of Europe as well. The history of Central Asia has for the bulk of the last few centuries been as tied to Europe as it has to the rest of Asia, with all five regional nations, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan being under the administration of firstly the Russian Empire and subsequently the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, known also as the Soviet Union. Therefore, the nations of Central Asia really had very little say over their own nation's geopolitical objectives, as they were controlled by a much larger power in Moscow. 1991 saw the dissolution of the Soviet Union, and with it, newly found independence for 15 nations, all seeking to define their own future free from being ruled from Moscow. However, few options were available to these young states, as each of them had to decide their future geopolitical strategy. To remain closely aligned to the Kremlin, or to look further west towards the European Union, NATO, and the United States. Recent decades have seen the rise of the Chinese superpower, who, while always nearby and of reasonable power and influence, did not previously have sufficient power to manifestly shift the priorities of an entire geographic region away from the Russia and the West dichotomy. China's rise has given nations around the world, not just in Central Asia, a new option. So with that, let's dig down on the three global superpowers and see what their goals are in the region. The United States has long held an interest in Central Asia. Due to its proximity to Afghanistan, the US has greatly benefited from allying itself with nations within a neighbouring region, supporting their frontline military efforts during the decades-long presence in the war-torn state. Despite the US-Soviet dichotomy no longer being present, a new, different, though similarly antipodal relationship would spawn between the United States and the newly born Russian Federation. For the United States, Having a robust, healthy relationship with Central Asian nations is important, not just in supporting the aforementioned military conflict in nearby Afghanistan, but it also sends a strong and abundantly clear geopolitical message to the powers that be in Moscow. To quote the United States Department of State's Strategy Overview for Central Asia 2019 to 2025, the United States' primary strategic interest in this region is to build a more stable and prosperous Central Asia that is free to pursue political, economic and security interests with a variety of global partners on its own terms, is connected to global markets and open to international investment, and has strong democratic institutions, rule of law and respect for human rights. A stable and secure Central Asia contributes directly to the United States' efforts to counter terrorism, support regional stability, promote energy security and enhance economic prosperity in the region and beyond. With these strategic interests, it is clear to see the United States deftly intertwining development, security, justice, and geopolitics. Scratching Central Asia's back, 
so that Central Asia will scratch theirs. For centuries, the entire region of Central Asia was under the control of firstly the Russian Empire, and more recently of course, the Soviet Union. The entire region, therefore, would appear to be somewhere that Russia must foster continued strong and positive relations. That said, for much of the time since the dissolution of the Soviet Union, and despite Russia's best efforts, the Kremlin by and large failed to develop a clear and coherent foreign policy for Central Asia for the long term. Acknowledging the importance of the region, but they have regularly pursued opportunistic and short-term policy instead of establishing a proper long-term policy. In recent years, however, this has changed, and Russia has once again asserted itself as a centrally significant geopolitical player in the region. Russia's foreign policy in Central Asia nowadays has three main goals. Firstly is fostering and maintaining military and security cooperation throughout the region, this includes both assisting in the modernization of the armed forces of the nations within the region, as well as the construction and continued operation of military bases in the region. With the downfall of the Soviet Union, Moscow lost control of the significant fossil fuel reserves and hydropower potential within the region. Nowadays, Russian foreign policy is to facilitate energy projects of all of these kinds. And finally, fostering bilateral and multilateral relations with nation states within Central Asia, most notably within the Eurasian Economic Union, the EAEU. The relative instability of national borders drawn arbitrarily by the powers that be within the Soviet Union, as well as pre-existing territorial, inter-ethnic or inter-clan conflicts created over many centuries have conspired to destabilize the security situation in Central Asia. Further, the continually unstable nation of Afghanistan neighbors the region, further complicating proceedings. Russia sees all of this as a potential threat to its national security, given the potential for criminal and fundamentalist structures and organizations to take advantage of the situation. The Eurasian Economic Union, the EAEU, is not the only multilateral treaty organization into which the Russian Federation has entered with nations from Central Asia. June 2001 saw the creation of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, or the SCO. The SCO is a political, economic, and security alliance that was founded by and incorporates its members Russia, China, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, and Uzbekistan, with India and Pakistan joining much later in 2017. The SCO alone encompasses 60% of the Eurasian continent and half of the world's human population. The Sino-Russian relationship fostered throughout the 21st century is an interesting one, though to properly discuss it would be far too long for this video. Nonetheless, let's move on. As a founding and major member of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, China seeks its continued empowerment and expansion. However, much like their northern neighbors, Beijing too has not laid down all of its eggs in the one basket. Perhaps the most expensive and indeed expansive of China's broad 21st century foreign policy directives is working towards the Belt and Road Initiative. The BNR, as it is also known, is a global infrastructure development strategy adopted by the Chinese government in 2013. The BNR invests in over 70 countries across Africa, Asia, and Europe, reaching approximately 4.6 billion people, well over half of the global population. The Belt in Belt and Road Initiative refers to the Silk Road Economic Belt, the land-based trade routes by road and rail through Central Asia, West Asia, and beyond, modernizing the famous Silk Road land trade route traversed by Marco Polo et al. many centuries ago. The Road in Belt and Road refers to the 21st century maritime Silk Road, a series of major deep water ports connecting East Asia through Southeast Asia, the Indian Ocean, the Horn of Africa, the Red Sea, and Suez Canal through into the Mediterranean. The impacts of the BNR on Central Asia have already begun, with infrastructure development and free trade zones having already been constructed. However, economic development through Central Asia, by way of the Belt and Road Initiative, isn't the only interest Beijing holds in the region. Like Russia, China maintains a military presence within the region, including a military base in Tajikistan, which, along with the Tajiks parting way with nearly 1,200 square kilometers of territory and the rights to a potentially lucrative silver mine in a nearby region to that given to China. These concessions were made in order for the Tajik administration in Dushanbe to pay off part of their foreign debt. 
more than half of which is owed to Beijing. These kinds of actions where China, already the powerful partner, gains more power or land from the smaller partner, is one of the reasons that the Belt and Road Initiative has drawn criticism from journalists from across the West. Another is a fear that the BNR Initiative will see the rise of a Sino-centric international trade network, challenging the Western-centric status quo, which is particularly parroted in the United States of America. The continued modernization and development within Central Asia is no bad thing, as people in the region experience a better and better standard of living. This kind of positive change doesn't come about without help from somewhere. Working alongside one another and indeed in partnership with one or more of the global superpowers, China, Russia or the United States of America. Central Asia lies between two global superpowers, one fading and one becoming ever stronger, and connects the east to the west. The nations within the region must look outwards for help in matters from business and the economy to modernizing their military forces and nullifying security threats. Meanwhile, these powers look back in at an abundance of people, of potential, and of resources. Balancing all of these forces, internal and external, is vital for the nations of Central Asia, working towards their own best interests in collaboration and acting as the traffic lights of the Silk Crossroad. Speaking of traffic lights, why not give this channel the green light by clicking subscribe and the notification bell. It takes only a few seconds and would help me out greatly. Anyhow, much love to you all. Thanks so much for watching. You guys know what I'm talking about?